So Ralph Messingill Jr., Mr. Change Engine, is back on Big Blend Radio's Success Express show today, and he's going to talk about branding and marketing in regards to tourism for small to medium communities. And we love that because Nancy and I here on Big Blend Radio, uh, we're about to embark on the second phase of our Love Your Parks tour. And uh, that's pretty much all of our travels really take us to a lot of small to medium-sized communities or neighborhoods, you know, really where our parks are, our national parks are. So uh, excited to chat with him about this. Ralph is a best-selling author and award-winning advisor, coach, marketing expert. He's presented seminars and papers about quality and change across the country and around the world. And you've got to go get his must-read book. It's called Conquer, Change, and Win, an easy-to-read, fun book on the serious, a serious subject of change. And uh, Ralph is one of our Big Blend experts here on Big Blend Radio. And you can read his articles if you go to blendradioandtv.com. And his article about tourism marketing is up on nationalparktraveling.com and is featured in the uh, January through March issue of Parks and Travel magazine. But you've got to go to his website, most important, conquerchangeandwin.com. Mr. Change Agent Ralph, how are you? I am terrific, lady, but I think I have made a terrible mistake. I thought you all said it was going to be about brandy, and I've got five fifths here to talk about. Uh oh. <laughs> Well, you know, we're out here in Tucson, Arizona, and branding might be, you know, we have to go see the local cattle rancher, and he may want us to, you know, get branded, and I don't want to. <laughs> That's why we have tequila out in these parts. <laughs> well, I understand that, but I don't see much difference in branding and a than an ugly tattoo, but never mind. I guess hey, I'm just not with it. They've got apps for that now. <laughs> Push a button and you can scan yourself, I think. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you never know. I, you, you know, you can still get there. Branding, you know, I, th- that word is true. I mean, when you think about cattle branding, they brand the cow. And, and you know, I don't like to look at that mm-hmm. personally. But it no. makes that mark. That's it. That is that is the message. This is who owns the cow. This is the cow company. This is, mm-hmm. you know, where it's from. Um, so that is, it's like your ID. And I even think now when, you know, people are going to adopt dogs, uh, that's you know, how it should be done. Everyone's just saying, oopsie, <laughs> it's just part of my marketing message. You go and they, you know, they put a chip on your dog. So, or they get those licenses so you can track your dog if they get lost or escape and run out through the woods. Um, because they knew there was shine around the corner, like there is in Tennessee where you are, Ralph, but that is really it. It's that core message, isn't it? Sure it is, and and again, the the main thing when beginning a branding process, we got to know what we want to be. We have to know what it is we want branded or logoed on our agenda. What when people think of X, Y, or Z, they think of A, B, or C. And the key is making sure that you can produce the branding you're talking about. And you really need to do the research to find out what you're capable of doing for people so that you can get them to come to your community or to your area. It doesn't, it doesn't work well for second time visitors. If you hype something and oversell it because you won't have that second visit. And we all know that we spend a lot of money trying to get folks to a particular area and the last thing we want them to do is to only come once. We Ooh. want them to come again and again and again and bring their friends and again. Right. Come and, and be a part. It's always past that two day mark too. Well and it and it is about people having such a good time, they tell everybody that they should mm-hmm. also go there. 
So if you're a one-time mm-hmm. visitor and not happy because you felt you were kind of oversold on something, and you get mm-hmm. there and it isn't what you felt you were promised, that's mm-hmm. a huge negative. Mm. Well, it it is it it just ruins the whole situation because Absolutely. let's get serious, ladies. If you don't tell it like it is, that's a form of misinformation, which is a nice word for lying. Mm. See, this is why you don't put on 20 pounds of makeup and a huge big wig. You see, this is why I don't like people asking for my driver's license, because then they look at the weight portion, and then they look at me, and an eyebrow goes up, and I say, shh, don't tell. <laughs> I was 16 when I had my driver's license photo taken. It's still me. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, when when you think about it, that message, it doesn't, it when it comes to branding, it's not just about an ad or a billboard or your Instagram Mm-mm. post. It actually is also within your company. You know, when I think of a hotel and Mm -hmm. someone goes to a hotel, now we're in the world of everybody's selfies and Instagram. And if you want to make a friend jealous, you take a photo of the champagne and caviar with the, you know, this beautiful pool Mm -hmm. and a really sexy waiter. You put it up on Instagram, go look at me. Now that's good for the hotel. But if you get there in the hotel, that was only one little part of the hotel and the rest of it didn't have the champagne and caviar vibe. Now you've Mm -hmm. lost your branding, right? So it's actually within the bones of the company, too. Well, absolutely, but you've lost it all because not only will they not be coming back, but they will tell if if they like something, Mm -hmm. the probability of them saying something to others about it are maybe two or three people. And if they dislike something, it's up to seven or eight people exactly. mm-hmm. so exactly. there's there's a real correlation of of overselling over telling what is available mm-hmm. you've got to tell it like it is now that that means we want to make it sound great but we want it to be what is there not something that we have embellished to the point that you can't recognize it. Mm. There's there's something really important about what you're saying there because when you define exactly... Well, it's Ralph, Nancy, well, of course. I know. But when you define <laughs> exactly what the visitor is going to get without mm-hmm. over-embellishing, now you actually are on the path of finding your target market you can't find mm-hmm. your target market if you say everything's wonderful for everybody because that just doesn't it doesn't work that doesn't wash mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. when you find your target market and i i know that the word target sounds a little like too yeah maybe like um business like but there you go Target market. Well, it is a business. This is it, a business, and it's exactly. a very important yeah. thing we have to do in order to make a company grow, exactly. a community grow, uh, a, an area grow, any of those things. It's it's mandatory that we have that kind of branding, and that kind of branding is where you tell the truth very well mm. and and be proud of it too and and i think it's what's interesting mm-hmm. too when you talk about um telling the truth of what it is and don't be the champagne caviar if you're not this is you know mm-hmm. if you are a destination like say a dusty desert small town right mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the motel is a motel and Maybe you have to share a shower with somebody else. You know, sometimes Hello. hotels have that, depending on what there <laughs> mm-hmm. is or whatever. But that's when you start mm-hmm. in with, yeah, we're rustic, but we have a really cool story. John Wayne used to stay here and, you know, things like that. This is the truth. So-and-so was here. And, mm-hmm. you know, Catherine Hepburn and let's, you know, just how many, pe- <laughs> how many, you know. That's a big shower. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, but anyway, no, but it's small. <laughs> it's not going to be the fancy place, but it could be comfortable and clean. And that's something mm-hmm. that I think always comes first. Comfort 
cleanliness. You don't mm -hmm. have to be fancy, but we and, want those things. We and, don't want bed bugs. And safety. And safety, right? That's right. a big deal. It, it, like, really big. Perhaps one way to say that is we're rugged and spotless. That's right. And we're waiting for you. <laughs> Come on down. But it's true. But well, it's, it's say, rugged. Mm -hmm. If it was good enough for John Wayne, it's good enough for you. But, <laughs> yeah, but it, it's exactly. That's exactly it. It's it's got to have you. You have find your story, right? Isn't that what it comes down to? Is finding your story, your key story. Mm -hmm. We talk about this as individuals finding our authenticity, having the integrity of finding out who you are as an individual. And when you start mm -hmm. a business as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. a lot of times we're like. I'm starting this business because of this. I found an, a niche. I found, you know, a solution. But when it comes to a destination, I think sometimes, um, especially when you look at a community vision, that sometimes we forget when we live in a place what we actually have. And we forget mm -hmm. to listen to find out what we have to tell that story. Have you experienced I that? I think that's exactly right. We mm -hmm. don't take an accurate inventory of the positives. Hmm. And if Do you, you don't tell, if you don't know what you are, it doesn't matter how loud you speak, you're not going to get the message across. Okay, because so inventory on positive. Because you repeat business. Mm -hmm. Repeat business. And so inventory of the positives, do you take the inventory of the negatives? You, you do... But the, the, it's totally different. There are okay. things that you want to talk about. Here are the positives. And you don't say, don't ever mention any of these, but say, here's where we are not strong. So don't and climb that, that mountain. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we want to talk about our strong point. And we we certainly, like every other organization in the world, have our positives and our negatives. And those that say they don't have any negatives already have a big one, and that mm -hmm. is they can't tell the truth. Right. Mm. You need to know the negatives so you can change them. Yeah, that, there's power that, in that. You, you need to know them, but they're second tier from the standpoint. Yes, that's mm -hmm. that's what we those those should be under improvements to make. Okay, exactly. Yeah, and understanding how to deal with them, have an answer when someone comes to town and says, "How come when I drive in there's like a landfill?" You know, that doesn't make me feel comfortable driving in. And you go, "Okay, yes. how do we handle this?" You know, <laughs> so what, well, what what way. you could do is is tell the plan. Well, mm -hmm. that that is something that we recognize, and we're in the process of completely changing that landfill. Mm -hmm. Will in another year and a half be, believe it or not, a brand new shopping center? And you never know. We know but, people who plant gardens on landfills. It, well, no, and I was just going to say, we know a town that we used to go to all the time, still do. On one entrance to the town is beautiful, and the other entrance of the town is not so much. Mm -hmm. And it takes mm -hmm. a simple look at how what a person sees when they drive in. You mm -hmm. could just plant some trees and bushes. And it's mm -hmm. not that expensive, and it would change the whole mood of the person driving in who is now excited to be there because you sold them mm -hmm. on it with your branding mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and your marketing. Mm -hmm. You sold them, and then they come in from that side of town, and you're like, oh, boy. And, you know, once people get that little negative vibe, it kind of sticks mm -hmm. longer with them than the good vibe. All they have to do mm -hmm. is landscape. Mm -hmm. And, and right. there are sim there's simple things that can be done to help you with your community project of branding and marketing as a destination. And that's there's, what you've got to look at. In the business, sometimes we, we say you have to put some lick, lipstick on that pig. That's, that's right. right. That's right. And that's mm -hmm. where it is. Uh, again, everything can be improved. 
And people will accept a negative if you have a good story that's factual Mm -hmm. of what you're doing about this negative Mm -hmm. with a timeline. With With a timeline. Mm -hmm. That's important. And and I like the fact that we're talking about the negative and the positive because sometimes – you know, we've seen it with the communities we go to, and, and they always like to hear from our eyes because we have fresh eyes in the in a community, mm-hmm. and we look at it and we photograph it. You know, I photograph mm-hmm. hotel rooms, and I swear I don't care <laughs> how many stars they have, I can show you just how much dust there is in hotel rooms. I know I can go and say, well, this room hasn't seen anybody for a while, has it? You know, for, I mean, I can tell you as as a room photographer, here we go. You know, I feel like, you know, the like Gestapo. But you can have the negative. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when you go in and we talk with these communities, there's this faction who goes, well, we're just not there yet. And I always go, well, you can't wait. I mean, it's the hardest lesson I've had to learn in life is to don't wait to be perfect. And I'm a Virgo, and I always want to be perfect. And Nancy's had to hit me over the head a gazillion times, not physically, to tell me you can never, you, you're never going to get there, get over it, jump. <laughs> you know? And I think that's a yeah, problem but you're, sometimes. But you're, but you're very close. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, I Ralph. That's exactly how I used to say. On. You're getting there, but keep working. Now, do I need a timeline? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I think so, oh, for man. sure. Oh, man. But it's true. There's a lot of people in communities or in an organization that won't want to budge and start promoting a destination, and the town could financially not do well. You know, if they don't start marketing and promoting what they do have. Well, the, you know, it's it's amazing to me how the size of the city or the area, the county, whatever the the community, whatever it is that we're branding, does not matter when it comes to finding quality branding. There, there's a little town in Tennessee, and most of you, when I say it, will know where I'm going. It's called Lynchburg, Tennessee. Mm, that name. At, yes, and there's in Lynchburg, Tennessee. They're right at two thousand people. It's not easy to get to Lynchburg, but it just happens to be the home of Jack. Daniel's whiskey. I'm on my and way. They have, and they have over a million visitors a year come into that little town. Wow. wow. That's wow. amazing. That's amazing, yeah. Now, that's unheard of. I mean, it's just because yeah. Jack Daniels does a magnificent job of branding. Yep. Wow. That Think is about huge. it. I don't know of anyone who's really much better than Jack Daniels over the 50 years I've been watching it. You know, it, it's really mm. interesting with that because now you're talking about a million people coming into a small town like that. And mm. so the town has to be able to be prepared to welcome visitors and have street flow um, because that's the other part. Mm. You bring up something where when you have a small town and here's a a big entity coming in and sometimes the word mm-hmm. tourism we always talk about sustainability. Sustainable mm-hmm. means to us that it's it's a light footprint. You're not talking about people that come in and vandalize the town and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, when we're talking mm-hmm. about the small to mid-sized towns like Vegas, they're used to it. You know, they have a police force for it. Um, you know, their stuff. But um, And I'm not talking about the shooting now that I said that. I don't mean it that way. Um, I understand. But, yeah. But you, there's there's adult playgrounds, and even Vegas right now is trying really, really hard to change that brand that has been there for so long, be more family-oriented. And it's like, well, <laughs> good luck with that. And they will probably get there at some point. But when you look at the small communities, the word tourism often, they're like, oh, we're going to have Disneyland in the backyard. We're not going to get parking. We're going to have traffic problems. Here comes all the whiny, wah, wah, wah. And I get it because mm-hmm. you move to a small town for some quality of life. But the town needs to be funded, and tourism can be sustainable in that 
you don't have, when you have someone like Jack Daniels, you have people coming year-round. That's sustainable. Absolutely. That is yes, sustainable. And the key is, if, if, if Lynchburg were to become a bigger city, it would spoil Jack Daniels' image. Mm. Oh, wow. Because yeah. You see where I'm going? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and and again, they they are wanting you to come visit, but they don't much want you to stay. Okay. Come through. And that's have understandable. Fun. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So There's a branding balance. is not always about bringing in new people. Wow. Yeah. That's the it's... point I'm bringing up. That's the point I'm trying to get. That. But that is about community vision. That's about everyone coming together at the table and and agreeing and moving forward. Wow. It it is. I was chamber, I was president of our chamber of commerce pretty much twice. And we always had a plan. There is a tavern here in the Morristown area called the Davy Crockett Tavern. Mm, Cool. Well, that tavern is not ancient. That tavern was built in 1955. Hmm. And back then, Fess Parker, who played Uh, Davy on TV, came to Morristown to dedicate that tavern. That's cool. And what I'm getting at, now we have a 1955 tavern that has a complete story that Mm. is all about Davy Crockett. Now, Davy (laughs) Crockett was born 30 miles from the tavern. Now that's cool. See, I looked yes. at the tavern. Nancy, you and I want to go mm-hmm. there when we go see Ralph. It's fun. When we come to Morristown, we want to go there. And uh, Steve Good. and I could Hollywood Great. history and get ready. <laughs> you can have to do Davy Crockett's Absolutely. <laughs> Hollywood history. Well, I'm looking forward to you ladies getting down here. And uh, I, I'm i stocking up on moonshine. Don't you okay. worry about Ooh. that. We <laughs> will have plenty of moonshine, and I shall also have Alka Seltzer. <laughs> and we want to meet. You know, we want to go to. The, we want to go to Jack Daniels. We have to go there now. You know, and think about that. You know, that's so interesting. Well, you really me. should. That well, is a fun place to go, and and I I I will say this: if you get on the Kentucky Bourbon, mm-hmm. uh, st- the Bourbon Road is is really interesting and I'm going to tell you something that's just a little secret if you go through the wild turkey distillery they give you two ounces of wild turkey free Woo-hoo. okay we're there <laughs> <laughs> see but this is but look at this this is that branding part right and then it becomes how do you spread the word so now when you're telling us that now you have become the positive voice because that's wild turkey for free is, you know, anything to do with turkeys yep. we're in. Um, but yes. wild turkey, too. I, I once had an ex that could not drink that anymore. <laughs> I saw that. Wild turkey is crazy. That's some, that's some craziness. But the reality is well, you're now the mouthpiece of this, right? So now you're giving the positive message. So their their marketing, branding, their message worked, but now mm-hmm. this is the marketing side of what branding is, right? That's marketing is the plan, the actual work. Mhm. That's okay. that's it. And in order to get a story out, I mean, Mark Twain did a lot of marketing for Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. I mean, first thing he did was uh, change his name to Mm -hmm. uh, Twain, which means about eight feet deep. And this is Mark Twain, which is Twain is two. Mm. So it's about 16 feet deep, and that's all it is about. But he he liked the sound of it, and he made it a universal 
word, so to speak, in in the world today. Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens was mm-hmm. just a name. Mark Twain was unique. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of thing that we need to look at in branding. Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens, branded himself with, at that time, a young look in that just that one word, Mark mm-hmm. Twain. That's amazing, isn't it? It's in the name. Well, look at mm-hmm. the musicians. They do that. Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga, you know, Madonna, they do that. Mm-hmm. You know, look at, look at Michael Jackson with the glove. Mm-hmm. Like, what was that? Mm-hmm. But everybody knew him mm-hmm. because signature. of the glove. That's my signature. signature. Mm-hmm. Right. And the moonwalk. Perfect walk. branding. Yes. Mm-hmm. It, Great it, example. Fleetwood Mac, the band Fleetwood Mac. When I mean, they've had so many different people come and go through the years. And let's not even talk about now. It's Now that's crazy. But um, when they went from being this really amazing blues band, and they're an amazing band, so I'm not knocking Fleetwood mm-hmm. Mac whatsoever, but... Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham joined, you know, Mick Fleetwood and Christy McVie and um, John McVie. When they joined, Mm. Stevie Nicks, which they didn't want her, but (laughs) Lindsey said, you're not having her without me. You know, Nancy and I are like that as a Mm. team. Well, she sat down and created the entire plan of this rebranding of Fleetwood Mac, the band. And she sat Mm -hmm. down. I'm going to be the witch. I'm going to do this, the Welsh witch. And to this day, they have Facebook. I mean, it's insane. Just because she decided I'm going to be a witch with a top hat and big high heel shoes, platform heels. Mm-hmm. Here it is. Mm-hmm. That's it. I'm going to beat a tambourine and, you know, if whatever. Everybody has their thing on singing. But um, don't. I'm going to get emails now. But she rebranded. You don't want me to comment, don't, do you? No, Nancy. But she rebranded that <laughs> well, band. Well, let, and let it's me one of, comment. It's huge. I'd love to see you play a tambourine. I oh, did. I don't. I used to cover their music oh. as a singer, but I call her. I, I call. No, I, no. Be nice. Don't. I don't think it's not nice. I just call her Goat Girl. No. It's kind of the eh voice, you know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> See? Y'all stay friends now. I know. No, but 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 Stevie Nicks really rebranded that band, and they've done it a few times. You know, when you look at some of these cases of going in and saying, okay, we're going to have to make a change, and then mm-hmm. you have to, your audience, your followers, your, your you know, clientele have to go, they're making a change. And sometimes mm-hmm. it can be a really positive thing. Under new management, sometimes can mean a really positive thing. You know, sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, so when you change, you got to be strong with your change, right? When something right. happens, like when you have mm-hmm. to change your brand, your message, you got to be strong. Mm-hmm. You got to know. And it's got to be better well, than the last thing. Mm. Uh, let me give you a, a good example of that is uh, I happen to, for some unknown reason, enjoy opera. Mm. And in mm-hmm. in Knoxville, they have a, a very fine opera. Cool. And until they moved the opera to the redesigned and refurbished Tennessee Theater, it was pretty much a flop at the place they were showing it. At the University of Tennessee, it was just a, a theater that they had there. But when they moved it to the Tennessee, which is fantastically refurbished, it began to be a real success. So awesome. it's about many things in branding. It's not just the quality of the music. It is not just what what opera is playing. It is also about the ambiance of where mm-hmm. it's shown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and it's that's about, what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. I always think of branding and marketing. Okay, marketing is the action branch of the branding, but the branding is the um, how many senses of the person 
that you're you're targeting, if I can use that word again, how many senses mm-hmm. can you tickle? Can you get them to see, hear, smell, touch? Can you get them to really get there with their own imagination to take what you present further in their mind? In mm-hmm. other words, when when I see really pretty pictures of a of a park, my, I want to go there. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm already halfway there because mm-hmm. that's what sparks my imagination. And mm-hmm. so I'm thinking, the, the when you when you're branding yourself, you it's it's difficult because you have to be finite in that you got to be straight arrow with your message, but mm-hmm. you have to somehow engage people that you've never met on the way. Mm-hmm. You've got to tickle their senses enough for them to even take a look. Let me give you mm. an example of how I'm not making this up. I am looking at the picture as I speak of how a major eyesore in Sudan Mm-hmm, was mm-hmm. turned into a tourist attraction. Okay. Picture a a two mile square garbage dump. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was gray, smelly, it was mm-hmm. awful, it was just a garbage dump. For some reason, one of the natives got in almost the center of that mile square garbage dump, built a fence out of reeds, low reeds, Mm. about three and a half feet high, and guess what he did? He planted a garden. Cool. And it shows him tending his little garden in he he is of course surrounded by a square mile of garbage and wow. now that garbage dump a tourist attraction wow that's crazy that's but, amazing to me yeah. that's just fantastic it i is. love it and that's educational too i think also in mm-hmm. tourism now that Communities mm-hmm. need to look at the educational component. We're in an information age, and people mm-hmm. want to have a tactile experience. You know, we talk about everybody being attached to their phones, very visual. So p- photos of this garden and that impact, that, you know, night and day difference is something mm-hmm. that visually, you know, there's vi- the visuals are huge. You know, the arts always, I think, Absolutely. when you come to marketing the arts. I'll send you arts, the picture. Please I'll do. I, I want to see that. I want to see that because, to me, that's it. In Yuma, Arizona, our, our headquarters of uh, the tour, um, you know, down the road, we talk about this on the show all the time. This place they had, it was a landfill. They restored mm-hmm. this entire lower Colorado River belt, which is huge and important because the Colorado River coming from the Rockies, um, up in you know, up up in uh, Rocky mm-hmm. Mountain all the way down to Mexico, and there's been this issue with the water, the damming, the, the agriculture, all kinds of things that we've done through history, and now we've had to undo it. And they did, mm-hmm. and it took 49 agencies coming together, that vision you were talking about, what is our branding? Well, here's a branding, a town getting together, the city, the county, the Native American tribes, Mexico, mm-hmm. California, and Arizona, all coming together to make this one stretch of the river work, tourism is now starting to happen. The city of Yuma has become, it's going through a renaissance. The arts are starting to flourish. Murals are going up. Higher-end um, productions in regards to the theater are coming in. Artists are coming in. Mm-hmm. That, to me, when the arts start to be part of it, shows when something is becoming a destination. You know, that's the mm-hmm. thing. I think it's and huge. they've also started talking about their history. Mm-hmm. There mm-hmm. were a couple cool. of battles fought there at uh, Yuma. In yes. fact, there's a joke. There's a joke I cannot tell about how Yuma, Arizona, got <laughs> its name. 
I know that joke. I know that joke, Ralph. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> imagine how can we But I'll that. show well, the you. Three, the three of us can enjoy it again. <laughs> It is. It is. I, I really. I encourage people to go there when you want to see a change of what they've done. Just uh, not even a week ago, um, a company, Gowan Company. I got to give them a shout out. They brought in 500 employees, um, all from different countries, to come in, and they planted 500 trees on I the Colorado it. River Bank just like a few I days ago. It. I mean, that's amazing. Oh, that's so nice. You know. Well, that's that, that's perfect. Perfect marketing and uh, public relations. That's how you do it. Okay, so that's that's part of it. So we've got the branding. This is what we're doing. People know this. Now Yuma's got this message going out. And you can have this vision. You can have this is our message. This is our story. But now we have to get it out there. And PR content yes. is key, but you have to have your your backbone in, in your article and everyone it's up on nationalparktraveling.com. Just type in Ralph, mm-hmm. you'll find him. Um, and it, you talk about one of the first things is web, your website needs to be refreshed in tourism. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Your website mm-hmm. is your everything and it's the most cost effective, everything that you have. It really is. That's right. It sure yeah. is. Mm-hmm. That, that is, that is absolutely right. And the, the, the folks, yeah, well, I've got a I've got a good website, but I haven't looked at it in two or three years. Well, then I guarantee you, it's not a great website. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. that brings it. It might have been. The, it it, it yeah, just needs to be changed around, and if you don't pay attention to it, it's not going to be cutting edge. Can't happen. It it's a storefront. That's how we we yes. I mean it is. That's it's, right. It's, you it's a that story. you nailed it. That's yeah, exactly because right. Yeah, because if you keep the same thing in your storefront all the time, mm-hmm. people go been mm-hmm. there done that. I want I want to look before I enter. That's human nature. You want to look first, and if there's nothing new, then you mm-hmm. go to the storefront that shows you something new. I I remember you know, just mm-hmm. way back when, Ralph, when we started the magazine and, you know, we were putting up our website. I, and I mean way back when. And um, mm-hmm. we had a really good uh, partner, um, and she's since passed, and so her business isn't the same. But um, I would go out to a store out in the backwoods <laughs> in, in, in the country and go photograph her, 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 her um, you know, her products, her different products. And you know, the mm-hmm. gifts and everything she was selling. It was a retail store. And she also had another, sure. you know, culinary store. And I would go in and photograph. And we, we had this discussion all the time. And we're like, we're not trying to be woo-woo people, but there's an energy of movement. If you're stagnant, you're stagnant. And as soon as I'm mm-hmm. going, and I know this from going and photographing mm-hmm. product for, you know, companies all the time. If I go into mm-hmm. a store in a little downtown district and I start photographing something, it sells. And I have clients calling and say, we have a slow day. Can can you come in and do some photos? And it's true. Now, I mean, things have changed. People have photos and everything, uh, their phones and whatever. But I'd go in and set up a table, do the whole thing, place it. And it would make them start to realize, man, I haven't done my storefront for a while. Exactly. They, and, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, this energy was created, and mm-hmm. they would make more sales. And then I would be like, you need to pay me more because now you've taken longer because now you're at the cash register and not helping me. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but, but, but then, if they changed it on their website, it would be this thing. It would happen exactly. within a week. I'd go back to Nancy. We'd mm-hmm. change up their marketing on our website. We'd change it up on their website because we were also helping people at that time with that. I swear, every time we did this, mm-hmm. it moved every time you move something and make a change you have created something like magnetic energy wise which will bring you business to your door and if you do not add things and do something to your website you have no energy you're dead mm-hmm. 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 period it becomes a gravestone right. it does it becomes a gravestone there's your epitaph or you have a storefront which mm-hmm. is it and and it's interesting because um, websites are like a mobile thing that mm-hmm. you can use any way you want. Mm. 
and it, it behooves people to think about it because if you're a storefront, you know you have to have your product. You need to present. If you have a new product, you need to put it in that window so people know because people are visual and mm-hmm. they want to know when there's something different, they'll walk in. But if it's not different, mm-hmm. why would you walk in? Mm-hmm. You, you feel like I've been in that shop 20 times. I know everything mm-hmm. they have. There's nothing new. I'm not going in. See, change well, the other came. thing is I, I get the impression that they're they're not selling anything. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's just sitting there. You've got I've been on that website three times, and they hadn't sold what was on there a year ago. Now, that may exactly. not oh be my the gosh. case, but that's the impression I get. Exactly. Okay. So what about hotels and destinations? They should be showing new events. I mean, we, I think hotels and even shops, like Nancy and I, we – tell people like a long time ago if you all came on the same board that community vision and you knew that this was what's happening if everybody ran the press releases almost not to spam google because that can happen but Mm -hmm. if everybody on their websites and social media said the same story wouldn't the town have a better impact in regards to people coming out if everybody updated their website with hey our -hmm. town is having a parade (laughs) you know if everybody did Mm -hmm. it It'd be unified, wouldn't that be more of a bigger welcome, you know, to people? Well, sure it would, and and what we have done uh, here in our local area, uh, we will we will send a website creator to your website and make suggestions at no charge to you. Now you have to make the suggest you have to make the uh changes yourself, mm. but we will show you how to improve your website without having to spend money for someone in the creative side because we will gotcha. give that person to you to use Wow, so it's about everyone collectively being on the same page and having the, you know, everybody pulling up their bootstraps. Is that a way to say it? <laughs> yes, and, and I can't stay on much longer because you've put me on a guilt trip and I've got to go change my, per, tweak my <laughs> site. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, man. <clears throat> you know, Ralph, it's, it's so interesting about this. So the reality is change, you have to change all the time. But your message stays the same. But you change what's new. You got to be new. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That that's exactly what it's about. How many times can you say Coke is a good thing? Mm. Well, Coca Cola spends twenty million dollars mm. just in the USA every year saying drink Coca Cola. Well, why would they do that? Because everybody knows about Coke. Mm-hmm. Because Dr. Now, Pepper those went, the, wait a minute. No, it was what Pepsi. About me? It's a Pepsi, Pepsi lesson. Well, Dr. Pepper and Pepsi and all those other companies go, well, what about us over yeah. here? It's called competition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I tell you, uh, Coke has lost a little market share because they haven't been creative enough. They're still See, spending they the again? money. Mm, wow. Do what? They did it again because they did that when mm-hmm. back in the magazine days in South Africa. Yeah, they did. And they, sent, we had uh, Coca Cola mm-hmm. was a client, and at that mm-hmm. point, they were getting back on the bandwagon. So we're talking about twenty five years yeah. ago, something like mm-hmm. that. And she sent me out, and she sent me to Coca Cola, and I, my knees were shaking, man. I was like seventeen, oh eighteen God. years old. What are you doing? You're going in. And uh, it was a nonprofit thing we were doing, so it was a nice feel-good thing. But at that point, it, it, Coca-Cola got their knees mm-hmm. beaten in because they let Pepsi yep. sit for like six months and take over their marketing, basically. They stopped marketing. They thought they were too good, and yep. Pepsi took them over. They won, and then they had to fight back. Yep. And so now they're doing it again, huh? They didn't learn. <laughs> well, 
uh, you know, everybody gets complacent after a little while, and the right word is arrogant, because oh. if everybody <laughs> knows, uh, you know, everybody knows about us, so mm. we will mm. we will do a little here and a little there, and things will just as long as we remind them, we can stay the same. Because what we have is what they want. What we mm. have is what they want today, but not a year from now necessarily. Mm. I think it's more like if you can think in a different way, like everybody knows who we are. It's it Maybe what we should all be thinking is nobody knows enough about us. Exactly, because there's always something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's always something we forgot to tell you. you. I mean, when you say that everybody knows who we are, that is one of the things that drives me bonkers. Like really, well, and I it hear should. it a lot, and it drives me. Yes. It, I just look at him and go, well, you know, should I go photograph your room and show you the dust? <laughs> so, maybe not. I'm sorry. I, it, Sell her the photo. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show. I do actually end up showing every. I swear. Um, anyway, <laughs> just saying that it, it is that, and that's that. Com- that you become complacent, and that's when your competition takes over. When you uh-huh. are not always looking further, what can we change up? And I think that's what's so beautiful about conquer, change, and win. Is I think that it's not waiting for change or anticipating change. It's about creating that little ripple because that's the energy. I think that's what's beautiful mm-hmm. about change is that new things come. New opportunities come with that energy. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. New people can come into your town if you have a new thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, yeah. it, it it is, and most people, uh, everybody fears change to some degree. There, there are yep. no exceptions. They do. But yep. the key is to have the gumption to change anyway. And there's a an acronym that goes like this, FEAR, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing mm-hmm. real. And the whole point is fear is X, but by the time we get to thinking about it and uh, put it here and put it there and what if this, then it becomes quadruple X. Hmm. And it hadn't moved. Ah, see, back Mm -hmm. to the energy, back to the perfection, back to all that. And here it is. Marketing channels will change all the time. Instagram's high now. It will be low in a few months. <laughs> Just saying, there's issues. I mean, it's right That's now awesome. Right. You should be on it and be prepared for the next thing. Watch the mm-hmm. social media. There's all kinds of new things popping up and, and pushing through. So there's all kinds of new things. Just when you think you're comfortable, be ready mm-hmm. to find a new chair. <laughs> the, the, the word that is in vogue now, which I like, frankly, is the word flexibility. Oh, I like that. That's the eight keys of excellence. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Be the willow. It it is. It is really a good word because it really is another way to say change. Mm. Exactly. I love it. And uh, you know, Ralph. You know, before you go, I would have. I would have got a song for you. It's called the Travel Song. And I wanted to play this. It's a beautiful guitar song uh, from Misha uh, Shellhaus and. To me, this is the Great. thing when it comes to tourism. Mm-hmm. If you're in the industry of tourism, we want sustainability, right? We want people coming in all the time and a nice, steady flow that you can handle. If you don't have your employees show up that day, you want that mm-hmm. that flow. But here it is. To understand change in tourism, I think you have to travel. You have to be a traveler to be in the industry sometimes. You can you know what I mean? You gotta at least take some weekend trips somewhere. Don't don't you think that travel teaches us change and flexibility? Oh, I think it does. And it is a huge learning experience that most people don't see it that way. They either see it as something I've gotta do 
or something I'm going to have a lot of fun with, and there's nothing wrong with having a lot of fun as we learn. Mm -hmm. But it's an educational tool. Flexibility is what it's about. Fixing what needs to be fixed is what flexibility is. It's being willing to do things differently, recognize what's not working, and be willing to change what you're doing to achieve your goal. <gasps> Ralph knows the eight keys of excellence because he's been on our show. <laughs> yes, they too. are. Oh, I, they, yes, it is. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't wait. We're going to have to do an excellent show when we come out to see you in Tennessee. It's Tennessee. Absolutely. Tennessee. I love it. Ralph, thank you so much for joining us to talk about two of our favorite topics, tourism, well, three, travel and change. They all go hand in hand. Absolutely. And that's important. And uh, everyone, again, Ralph's article is up right now on nationalparktraveling.com and will also be featured in the January through March issue of Parks and Travel magazine. And, again, that's at nationalparktraveling.com. The thing to do is go get Ralph's book, Conquer, Change, and Win, an easy-to-read fun book on the serious subject of change. You can go to his website, conquerchangeandwin.com. He's on Facebook, Twitter, and he's on Instagram. He doubles down on that. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> That's the thing right now. Uh, also, you can keep up with his articles on blendradioandtv.com. Just type in Ralph in the search box or conquer, change, and win. Say that ten times and keep doing it. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Ralph. Here's your song. It's Travel Song, again, by Misha Shellhaus. It's from his album Double Take, and Misha is in the tour. The ministry has a couple of beautiful Airbnbs outside Joshua Tree National Park. So there you go. There you oh, go. that's going to be fun to listen to. All right. You take, take care. care. Thanks, Ralph. Okie doke. Thank okay. you, ladies. Thank you. Now behave. Ha ha. Ha ha.